Hello, good day everyone. We are the group 6 and we are going to discuss about The First Voyage Around the World by Antonio Figafita. The first voyage around the world in human history. It was a Spanish expedition that sailed from Seville in 1519 under the command of Ferdinand Magellan. It made a major breakthrough in perception of Europeans toward world geography with an objective to discover an alternate path to Moluccas because of 1494's Treaty of Tordesillas, a decree from Pope Alexander VI that had essentially divided the world in half between the Spanish and the Portuguese. It lasted for three years, from 1519 to 1522. Ferdinand Magellan, 1480 to 1521. Ferdinand Magellan was a Portuguese explorer who sailed under Spain, to reach Moluccas without crossing any Portuguese territory. He was promoted to the rank of captain in 1510. He returned to Portugal in 1512. Through observing wind directions and ocean tides, Magellan later conceived the idea of a passage to the west or around South America to reach the Moluccas or Spice Islands, which is now the Indonesia. He went in Spain in 1517. In his newfound home, Magellan met influential persons who helped him get support for his plan to find a new route to the Spice Islands from King Charles I. One of them was Bishop Juan de Fonseca, the head of the Real Council of the Indies. Magellan's New Route to the East Magellan left the port of San Lucar de Baramida, Spain, on September 20, 1519, with five ships, namely, the Trinidad, the flagship of the fleet, under the command of Ferdinand Magellan, with 55 crew, it was attacked by a Portuguese ship and left shipwreck. It was the fourth ship that has been lost in this voyage. Conception, under the command of Gaspar de Quisada, with a crew of 43, its captain was ex executed because of mutiny, the, the ship was born, the third ship that has been lost. Third, the Santiago. With a crew of 32, it is the smallest of the five ships, also called as a caravel. The first ship that has been lost. Fourth, San Antonio, under the command of Juan de Cartagena. With a crew of 60, it was the largest, largest ship in the fleet. It was later led by Alvarado Mesquita. It was the second ship that had been lost. And lastly, the Victoria. Under the command of Lois de Mendoza, with a crew of 43, it was later led by Juan Sebastián del Cano, and Antonio Figuepita was on board. It was the first ship to circumnavigate the world, the only ship that completed the voyage and came back to Spain. Together with about 237 men, including Portuguese, Spanish, Italians, Germans, Flemish, Greeks, English, and French, Spanish authorities were wary of Magellan so that they prevented him from sealing, switching his mostly Portuguese crew to mostly men of Spanish. Nevertheless, it concluded about 40 Portuguese. Accompanying him were Father Pedro de Valderrama, the fleet chaplain, Antonio Figuefita, chronicler of the expedition, Duarte Barbosa, Magellan's brother-in-law, Joao Sirao, relative of Francisco Sirao, and his Malay slave, Enrique of Malacca, acting as interpreter. There are some important personalities you can find in this voyage. First, Juan Sebastián del Cano. He was a Spanish merchant ship captain, settled at Seville, Seville embarked seeking the king's pardon for previous misdeeds. Antonio Figafita, a Venetian scholar and traveler, had asked to be on the voyage accepting the title of supernumerary and a modest salary becoming a strict assistant of Magellan and keeping an accurate journal about the voyage. Francisco Albo, he was one of the sailors to report the voyage and keep a formal logbook. Juan de Cartagena, he was an inspector general of the expedition and responsible for its financial and trading operations.
Good afternoon to each and everyone. Ma'am, good afternoon. So today is I am going to report my part of our topic, the first voyage around the world in the year of 1519 to 1520. So in the year of 1519, Augustine, Magellan commanded the lead ship Trinidad and was accompanied by the four other ships, the San Antonio, the Concepcion, the Victoria, and the Santiago. The expedition would prove long and arduous, and the one only ship, the Victoria, would return three years later across the Pacific, carrying a mere 18 of the fleet's original crew of 270. So, in the next month, September 20, Magellan set sail from the Spain in an effort to find a western sea route to the rich spice islands of Indonesia. In command of five ships and 270 men, Magellan sailed the West Africa and then to Brazil, where he searched the South American coast for a strait that would take him to the Pacific. So, until in December 13, he reached the Rio de Janeiro, Janeiro rather, a large estuary south of Brazil. For the way through failing, he continued south along the coast of Patagonia. He named it Santa Lucia because he landed there on the saints. First day there, they, they traded with the Native American for provisions. Until the last month of the year 1519, which is uh, on December 27, departure from Rio de Janeiro. And then until 1520, on January 10, he then sailed south to the Rio de la Planta and vainly proved the estuary, seeking the street. And next, and the Next m month, on February 27, entering Bahia de los Patos, Bahia de los Patos, the fleet anchors of a broad bay. They call it Bahia de los Patos for the immense number of penguins. Puerto San Julian, Santa Cruz province of Argentina. On March 31, Magellan decided to spend the winter in Pant Patagonia. On March 31, they established a settlement called Puerto San Julian here. A fight between three of the five ships' con captains broke out. Quesada and Mendoza were executed and Cartagena and oppressed were left on the coast. And then until they reach to April 1 and 2. In the next month, Mutiny on Victoria, Concepcion and San Antonio, death of Luis de Mendoza, later execution of the Cuesta, Maru owning of the Cartagena, Al Alvaro de Mosqueta becomes captain of San Antonio, Duarte Barbosa of Victoria. And then, in the end of April, Santiago is sent on a mission to find the passage. The ship is caught in the storm and weak. Survivors return to Puerto San Julian. Serrano becomes captain of the Conception. Thereafter, Victoria was the only ship to complete the return voyage. After Magellan's death, death his crew continued in the single ship that remained survivors returned to Puerto San Julian Serrano, became captain of the Conception. So, on July, encounters with the Pythagorean Giants, Pythagorean Giants came to mainland of the Big Fit. Mga dago, dago ka na silang mga tao, as in like ang mga tao kay tagahawak na nila sa ilang kadago. Magellan says two of the younger males, males and host, as hostages to bring back to Spain and they got sick and died on the journey. So wala sila kaabot sa kanang kuan sa lugar nga gikuan ni Magellan para sa ila. Ah. So on August 23 or 24 
Fleet departs Puerto San Julian for Rio Santa Cruz. On, on October 21, the fleet found the entrance to the strait and began to travel across. Across it, they sailed around the Cape of 11,000 virgins and through a labyrinth of islands. They saw bonfires and had been lit by the indigenous people, naming the archipelago the Terra del Fuego. A few days later, the Carac San Antonio deserted, leaving the expedition behind. It arrived back in Seville in May 1521, claiming not to know that had happened to the rest of the fleet. In the end of October, San Antonio charged to explore Mag Magdalen Sound, fails to return to the fleet, instead sails back to Spain under Estavo. Go, Estavo Gomes, who imprisoned Captain de Mesqueta. The ship arrives in Spain on May 21, 1521. And then on October 28, the Trinidad, the Conception, and the Victoria found the passage of the South Seas at Cape Desire. The Strait of Magellan, which connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, is 350 miles long. It took the expedition three ships, 38 days to cross it. November 28, the fleet leaves the strait and enters the Pacific Ocean when out in the Pacific some of the crow gets curved. On the same day, the fleet reached the southern sea which Magellan named the Mar Pacifico, which is Pacific Ocean because it was called. Unfortunately, Magellan has underestimated the ocean size. In the next five months, the ship was running out of supplies. Instead of biscuits, the men ate so dust. They also started to eat leather roof guards. After 38 days on the street, the fleet finally emerged at the Pacific Ocean in November 1520. They were the first Europeans to see the ocean, Magellan named it Mar Pacifico because it, its waters appeared calm in comparison to the difficult straight waters. And then the 1521, 6, 1521, during his fateful trip around the world, Ferdinand Magellan landed on Guam. It was the first contact Europeans had with the islands and important during the expedition that had begun in Spain in 1590. Good day, ma'am. I am Andrew Lina Saganay, and my topic of this report is Buyids to the Philippines, which is the next um, report or next topic from the previous reporter, uh, Ms. Analet Tivaras. I am now referring the Buyids to the Philippines, so let us proceed. March 17, 1521, the fleet saw the towering heights of summer the next day, they landed at Humonhon. For Landrunis Islands, Magellan's fleet went on their journey westward at the dawn of Saturday on March 17, 1521. They saw the towering heights of summer and named the island Islas de San Lazaro, for it was the feast day of Saint Lazaro. They stayed overnight to Solowan Island. The following day, they landed on the small and in Hafited slit of Homono or Monhon, found at the mouth of Liti Gulf and built two tins for the ship. On the third day, after their arrival on March 18, they met nine natives from the neighboring islands of Suluan, who arrived in a boat, seeing them as a friendly people. Magellan gave them red caps, mirrors, combs, small bells, ivory, fine linen cloth, and other trifles. In return, the islanders give them their cargo of bananas, fish, coconuts, and palm, uh, or palm wine or the coconut wine. As we can see, let us look the picture. As the return of the uh, natives, they are giving to Magellan the, or the company of Magellan the bananas fees and also to buy or the farm wine on holy thursday march 28 
1521, the fleet landed in another island called Masawa, which could be the Masawa in Leyte or Masao in Butuan. Raja Colombo was rude to where the real France were. At first, he refused to word Magellan big ship. Finally, the Raja welcomed Magellan and visited him aboard his ship. He gave Magellan three four cylinders of rice, while Magellan gave a red cap and a red yellow robe. Barangay Magallanes, Lemasawa, Southern Leyte is the site of the first Christian mass in the Philippines. They conclude it was Lemasawa. A conservator said that Masawa, where Magellan landed in 1521, and the island of Lemasawa in the book written by Father Francisco Combes are one and the same. In all former resources, including the diary of Antonio Pigafita, the chronicle of Magellan Buhids, the name of the place was Masawa. On Easter Sunday, March 31, 1521, a mass was held on Masawa shore with Reverend Father Pedro de Valderrama officiating. At sundown, Magellan, in the presence of Spaniards and Filipinos, planted a large wooden cross on the summit of a hill overlooking the sea. He named the country the Islas de San Lazaro. On April 7, 1521, Magellan together with King Colombo and the Spanish native fleets landed on Sugbu, and now we call Cebu. On the same day, Humabon made a blood compact with Magellan after the latter had won his true friendship. Magellan explained to the Cebuano chieftain the Christian teaching about the honoring one parents. This compounded Raja Humabon. Soon, he and his wife and daughter sought to be baptized as a Christian. On Sunday, April 14, 1521, a mass on the shore of Cebu was held with Raja Humabon and his people attending the ceremony. After the mass, Magellan planted a huge wooden cross and gave Queen Juana, the wife of Raja Humabon, an image of the child Jesus as a gift. There were the about 800 Filipinos who participated in the mass and underwent ritual baptism. As for Humabon, renamed Carlos, Magellan likewise tried to impose Christianity and Spanish sovereignty on local chieftains. And for the next topic will be reported of Miss Masik. So, and that's all my part, and thank you. So, Andrew Sagane was already done discuss about the voyage to the Philippines and now I will continue discussing the development of the incidents, which is the continuation of the first voyage around the world by Antonio Pigafetta. By the way, I am Marini Samasi. On April 27, 1521, Magellan invaded Mactan. He led an army of 60 steel clad Spaniards in three vessels and 1,000 Cebuano warriors in 30 boats. He told Raja Humabon and his men to stay on their boats, watch how the Europeans fight. Magellan had misjudged the fighting skill of Lapu Lapu and his men. Magellan was wounded in the battle. A poisoned arrow hit his right leg and then a bamboo spear struck his face. Lapu Lapu and his fighters pounced and killed him. The remaining Europeans retreated and left the body of their captain behind. The remaining members of the expedition were forced to flee the islands before the Cebuanos could kill them all. With three ships left Trinidad, Concepcion and Victoria, they continued their voyage to Molucas. By the way, the real name of Lapu Lapu was Kalipulaku. On May 1, 1521, Barbosa is killed and Serrano was captured. At the local banquet, Barbosa and 27 sailors, including Afonso de Goyes, the new captain of Victoria after the election of Barbosa and Serrano, are murdered and Serrano captured. The three remaining ships escaped to the islands of Bohol. On May 2, 1521, Concepcion is burned down. 
There are not enough men to handle three ships. Thus, the warm infested conception is burned down. Two ships remain, the Victoria and Trinidad. Gonzalo Gomez de Espinosa becomes captain of Victoria. Joao Lopez Carvalho is made as the captain general. The ships sail to Mindanao, Mapun, Palawan, and Brunei. On September 21, 1521, Martin Mendez became captain general. Espinosa became the captain of Trinidad and the Cano in Victoria. On November 8, 1521, arrives at the door in the Moluccas. On December 21, 1521, Victoria leaves Moluccas to return home. Victoria, under the command of Ilcano, leaves the Moluccas to return home, sailing west towards the Cape of Good Hope. Trinidad remains at the door for repairs. On January 25, 1522, Victoria reached Timor. Victoria reaches Timor and starts to cross the Indian Ocean. On April 26, 1522, Trinidad leaves Moluccas heading home. Trinidad, under the command of Espinosa, leaves the Moluccas heading home, sailing west. After five weeks, Espinosa decides to return to the Moluccas, where he and his ship are captured by a Portuguese fleet under Antonio de Breta. On May 22, 1522, Victoria passes the Cape of Good Hope. Victoria passes the Cape of Good Hope and enters the Atlantic Ocean. Cape of Good Hope, it is a rocky headland on the Atlantic coast of the Cape Peninsula in South Africa. On July 9, 1522, Victoria reached Santiago Cape Verde. Victoria reaches Santiago Cape Verde. Um, Cape Verde, I think. It is a country in Africa. On September 6, 1522, Victoria returns to San Lucar. Victoria returns to San Lucar de Barameda under the command of Vulcano, two weeks shy of three years after setting sail. On September 8, 1522, Victoria arrives at Seville. Victoria arrives at Seville technically completing sa the circumnavigation The circumnavigation was completed by one ship, the Victoria, under the command of Juan Sebastian, the Cano, and a crew of 18 men. Antonio Pigafetta's journal is the main source for much of what we know about Magellan and Del Cano's voyage. The other direct report of the voyage was that of Francisco Albo, last Victoria's pilot, who keep a formal logbook. So I think I almost done. Hopefully you understand the discussion and thank you for listening. God bless.